this section uh, we will discuss about ACI contracts. So ACI follows the uh, whitelist model uh, by a default, everything is denied. So if you talk about our uh, legacy network in the legacy network, everything is allowed by default. And uh, if you want to uh, block the communication between two endpoints, so we apply the access lists. But uh, in ACI by default, everything is uh, blocked or denied. So if you want uh, two endpoints to communicate, uh, which belongs to uh, two different endpoint groups. So we need to uh, put a contract between them. So uh, if you uh, see the second uh, line, so by default, the endpoints in the same EPG, they can communicate without any problem. Uh, but if two endpoints belong to two different endpoint groups, they cannot communicate by default. So if we won't, as I, uh, discussed earlier also that uh, we need to put a contract between these uh, endpoints uh, groups. Uh, now let's see how we can uh, create a contract. So the uh, location is if we go to the tenant in the tenant, uh, we can uh, go to contract. Under contract, we can see we have standard uh, contracts. We can right click and there is an option create contract. So once we click here, you can see here on the right hand side, you will uh, see this uh, type of interface. So now we need to give the name for this particular contract. For example, I give the name web. And uh, on the downside, so if I go back, you can see here. So we have the contract. This is the name of the contract webcom or web communication. I give this name just for the reference. So I have taken uh, two endpoint groups, one uh, endpoint group named uh, web server and another endpoint group name that is uh, web client. So we want uh, the web server to open uh, port number 80 and 443 for the web client. So uh, once we right click here, we'll click on the create contract. So we'll see this particular interface. We'll give the name of the contract. And on the downside, you can see now uh, it is giving us the option for the subject. So we'll click on plus to add the subject. So we'll uh, give the subject a name. Like I have given the name web. Now on the downside, you can see we have the filter. So this is the location wherein uh, we'll apply particular policies or uh, we'll do the actual filtering here. Uh, so we'll click here on the plus sign. Now let's move ahead. So when we click on the plus sign, we can see there are some uh, default filters. If you want to uh, create new uh, modified filters according to our need, so we need to click on this plus sign. And once we click on the plus, now it is giving us this particular interface. So now we need to fill the name of the filter that uh, you want to put. So now I mentioned the name allow HTTP. I created uh, two filters or two entries in this particular filter. So one uh, entry I created for the HTTP traffic and uh, the second one I created for the HTTPS. So you can see uh, the name of the a particular entry, HTTP, ether type, it is IP, IP protocol is TCP, and on the source port range. So we can give a particular range for the source and destination uh, ports. So in the source port, you can see it is mentioned unspecified. It means any if we uh, compare it with the uh, legacy network access lists and in the destination uh, you can also specify some particular uh, range of ports but uh, let's say if you want to specify one particular port so i mentioned for uh, the destination port it will be http same i mentioned for the second uh, filter entry for https uh, ether type ip protocol tcp Source port uh, can be anything. Uh, destination port, 
it will be for HTTPS. Now you can click on update. Once your filter is created under the subject and you have created that particular contract, now we need to provide this particular contract. So we'll go to the server. So basically we need to go to the EPG that will be the provider of that particular contract. So just uh, think of this way that I'm the web server. So someone is coming to me uh, to access port number 80 and 443. So I am the owner of those particular ports. Just think of this way because this uh, a provider and a consumer can be confusing. So uh, we need to just make sure that we are uh, providing the correct direction for the contract. So in my case, we have the web server EPG and web client EPG. So web server is providing or the web client is accessing this particular web server on port number 80 and 443. So web server will be the uh, provider of the contract. So we'll go to the web server EPG, we'll right click and we will say add provided contract. So uh, it will give this particular interface you can see on the downside. Uh, so we'll click on the drop down and we'll uh, just select the contract name that we have given to create for this particular communication. So in our case, we have given the name webcom. So we'll click on the drop down and we'll uh, just select that particular contract. Also, uh, we'll go to the uh, web client EPG and then we need to consume that particular contract. Okay. So it means that once we have done this particular uh, configuration, it means that now the flow from web client EPG source port can be any and destination port will be 80 and 443, it is allowed. But uh, the communication in uh, the reverse direction should also be there, right? So for that, if we go back, you can see here on the subject, when we were creating the filter, so we have the reverse filter ports. So we can uh, uh, just click here or by default it, it is already checked. So it means that bi-direction communication will be allowed. So uh, we have consumed the contract. Also we can uh, see it in a graphical view. Uh, so we'll uh, go to the contract. We'll click on the contract name and then we'll go to topology. On the topology, you can see we have a contract. The name of the contract is uh, webcom. It is also showing us the tenant name. In my case, my tenant name is test underscore TN. And now you can see the direction of the contract. So we have the web server uh, EPG and web client EPG. You can see that the direction of the provider is away from it and the consumer is consuming this particular contract. And now I see the flow of the traffic is the opposite of the direction of the contract. You can see here the uh, web server is the provider of the contract, but the actual flow of the traffic will be from consumer to the web server. So the uh, client is going to access port number 80 and 443. So the flow will be like this. And the contract is like this way, right? The contract you can see in the diagram, it is uh, clockwise, but the flow of this particular uh, communication will be from client to server, which is uh, anti-clockwise. Uh, one more thing uh, I would like to discuss about contracts is that, let's say I have one uh, EPG web server and uh, one EPG that is web client. I do not want to, uh, put any contract between them, but I want these two EPGs to communicate. So in that case, what I can do, I'll go to the EPGs and in the EPGs, uh, there is an option called preferred group member. By default, it is exclude, but if we click on the include, so I'll go to the web server EPG, I'll click the preferred group member include, then I'll go to web client EPG, 
I'll click on the preferred group member include. Then we do not uh, need to have a contact between them or by default, then if they uh, both these EPGs belongs to the uh, preferred group member, so they do not uh, need any contract to communicate. So this is how um, we can bypass the contract uh, between the different EPGs. Now take let's take another example. So we have four EPGs, web server, web client one, web client two, and web client three. So let's say I want a web server EPG, web client one EPG, and web client two EPG to communicate without a contract, but web client three EPG to have a contract when they communicate with each other. So in that case, what we can do, we can put web server EPG, web client one EPG and web client two EPG in the preferred group member. And we can leave uh, web client three EPG as it is in the default exclude state. So in that case, web server EPG, web client one and web client two, they can communicate with each other without uh, any contract. But if web client three wants to communicate with any of these uh, EPGs, we need to uh, put a contract between them, okay? Also, uh, let's say we have another uh, case that under uh, a VRF, no matter how many uh, EPGs we are having, we want all these EPGs to communicate with each other uh, without any contract. So what we can do, so let's say the, we have these four EPGs under the VRF name two, VRF two. So, and we want all these uh, EPGs to communicate without any contract. So we, what we can do, so there is an option globally that we can uh, click to make this possible, uh, we'll go to the, the location will be, we'll go to tenant, and then we'll go to networking, then VRF. Under the VRF, there is an option policy, control, enforcement, preference. So here, uh, there are two options, enforced and unenforced. So if we click on the unenforced, so after clicking this, the impact will be that all the EPGs, which belongs to this particular VRF, there will not be uh, the requirement of contract. So it will be something like permit IP and any, &E, so everything uh, will be allowed. There are uh, some more uh, contracts also, uh, like we have the taboo contracts. So taboo contracts, let's say if you have uh, some contracts applied to some particular flows, but if you uh, want uh, something to be denied, so you can create, uh, you can also create the uh, taboo contract. So if we talk about the sequence, so first of all, the taboo contract will be checked and then your normal contract or standard contracts will be checked. So uh, basically uh, this series is uh, based upon the network centric approach uh, for the Cisco ACI. But uh, in our next topic, we are going to discuss about the layer three out, which is a very vast topic. And uh, we, in between uh, that uh, discussion, there will be some uh, points related to contracts as well. So that is why I uh, went through the contracts as well. So in our next section, uh, we will discuss about uh, the ACI layer three out. So till then, uh, keep learning and uh, thanks for watching.